Welcome to Manchester, the northern industrial city that's probably most well known for its football or for the fact that it's produced musical legends like Oasis and the Stone Roses. But the city's industrial heritage means it's not exactly famous for its beauty and therefore isn't usually on everyone's travel bucket list. However, it's the only UK city to be named one of the places to be in 2023 by both Lonely Planet and National Geographic. I'm here today to find out if that's really the case. I'll be checking out some of the places mentioned by Lonely Planet and National Geographic, as well as some Mancunian institutions. So let's get going. I'm starting out with a wander through the Ancoats district, which was once the beating heart of the city's industry. Manchester is famous for being the first industrialized city in the world and was the UK's leading producer of cotton and textiles during the Industrial Revolution. Nowadays, Ancoats is one of the coolest districts in the city, with lots of up-and-coming restaurants, cafes and bars. Manchester's had somewhat of a post-pandemic revival, with lots of exciting new projects and openings like the Castlefield Viaduct here, which is now a Highline City Park. The park is built on an old steel railway viaduct, with the aim of creating more green space in the city. It's a really interesting example of how Manchester's new developments pay homage to the city's industrial heritage. Both Lonely Planet and National Geographic mentioned the development of Manchester's Jewish Museum as a reason to visit the city. Manchester's Jewish Museum is another recently developed building, so let's go check it out. In 2021, the museum reopened with a building twice the size as before. It's attached to an old synagogue, which has also been refurbished. I'm meeting Alex Cropper to find out why she thinks the museum is so important to the city. It's really important a city like Manchester tell the diversity story. It's a city that is constantly changing and who's living here. And every wave of migrants that have arrived in the city have changed it and made an impact and added richness and culture and colour to the space. Um, so it's really important there's buildings like this to tell that story and I'd love it if there was a building like us for representing all the different community groups in Manchester um, and I think it's, it's a big part of who the city is today. Um, our gallery is full of stories of, you know, from the 19th century but also from people living in Manchester today and making an impact in the city right now. Tell me a bit about the redevelopment of the Jewish Museum here. Yeah, so there's been the Jewish Museum here in Manchester since 1984 um, and that was just a synagogue building. And for a long time, the museum team here wanted to expand and knew they could do so much more if we had more space. Um, and so we reopened in 2021 with this new extension attached to the old synagogue building, um, which we're, we got, uh, this, this gallery was studying today, so we could tell the stories about Manchester's Jewish communities. We got a cafe, which is a really important part of our museum experience, because it's not just a place to get a butty at the end of your visit. It really is part of the experience where the food is, part of the narrative we're telling about the people who arrived here in the city and the traditions and cultures they brought with them. Um, you know, we're stood on a map here, we're talking about Red Bank, where the Jewish community settled, you know, generations ago. Red Bank as an area now is, you know, completely changing and being revitalised. So it's, it's a nice part, it's nice to be part of that experience as the museum, to be one of the cultural attractions in this area that's part of that development. <laughs> Since food is such an important part of the museum, let's try some. I go for a classic shakshuka and vegan kishka, and it's delicious. Manchester is one of Europe's fastest growing cities, but it's seen even more redevelopment than usual since the pandemic. There seem to be innovative projects being set up all over the city. This big white building over here is under construction right now, so we can't get any closer, but it's set to open in June as a major art space and cultural hub. There seems to be a bit of a running joke with the locals that the country's low on cranes because they're all here in Manchester. 
The city's development hasn't just been about new buildings. Creating more green spaces has been at the heart of the city's growth. Mayfield Park is Manchester's first ever city centre public park and it was designed as an urban escape. You can see that they've really made an effort to preserve Manchester's industrial parts in the midst of this huge beautiful green space. Unique to the city I guess. Okay, I have to check this out. <laughs> this is definitely made for people smaller than me. <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Woo! Right, let the nausea begin. <laughs> We're gonna actually take it. Oh, we're getting too old for this kind of thing. Oh, God. Okay, let's get serious again. Time for some more culture. Bands on the Wall is Manchester's oldest licensed music venue and it just recently reopened again last year after undergoing some major refurbishments. Manchester has always had a thriving culture scene, especially when it comes to music. I'm meeting Santana Guerrero to find out more about how the city shaped the music scene here. Band on the Wall puts on eclectic performances from artists from all over the world, like this Ukrainian folk quartet. Or this British folk rock and reggae fusion band. And music in Manchester is obviously You've got some huge names like Stone Roses, Oasis, The Smiths, like there's that history here. Um, why, why do you think Manchester has been such a hotspot for music? It's always been like trying to redefine itself. Loads of DIY things happening. I think that's where the music came from. Like, and also the influences that came into the city. So we've always had quite a big immigrational influx. So from the Irish influx back in the days to, um, yeah, to the South Asian influx, to the Jamaican influx. Of, so there's always been kind of something going on in Manchester which influenced the music and I think you can hear it and therefore, um, I think therefore the, the, the great music that came out and the great artists that came out of Manchester. Can you tell me a little bit about the way that Band on the Wall has developed over the last few years? So obviously a uh, Mancunian institution, yes. but how has it developed? I think in the 1940s or 1930s we've had a landlord that um, tried to get the space used as much as possible so used to uh, put the band literally on the wall uh, in order to have more dance floor and more people in the venue so that's where the name comes from. Smart move. Yes absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've been here for some time as well. Our first refurbishment was in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, opened up to a 340 cap and now last year we did another expansion into uh, the Cocosa and are now at 500 capacity and are running pretty much every day. <laughs> How do you see the future of music in the city? Uh, forever growing, we've got loads and loads of great venues, uh, we've got a pool of absolutely amazing artists, uh, still redefining itself all the time. Um, and yeah, absolutely still working on all the local artists as well to bring them out of Manchester. Manchester has been named like the place to be this year. It's been mm. the only UK city to be named uh, as one of the must visit spots in the world. Why do you think that is? We've got loads of entertainment, not just music, but we've got music, we've got uh, wonderful restaurants, bars, 
pubs, clubs, um, you've got football, there is a wonderful greenery, you've got the canals, you've got a little bit for, of everything for each, each taste. Um, and yes, I, I mean, I moved here 13 years ago and was supposed to only stay for six months, so. <laughs> A trip to Manchester wouldn't be complete without visiting one of the city's famous craft beer bars. Some of the finest craft beer in the world is brewed right here in Manchester, so a trip to the Marble Arch Inn seems like the perfect end to my day. Very good. They've got some seriously wacky flavours on offer. Peanut butter and cacao in real stout. It smells like chocolate. Music. Ooh, I can smell the ginger before you taste it. Oh wow. Mm. You need to try. Yeah, I'll try this one. Thanks so much. Absolutely, I can find it. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Welcome to Manchester. Thank you. So is the beer that you guys have here, is it all locally brewed? The brewery did initially start in the back room of the pub, uh, where the kitchen is now, in just some very, very tiny units. Um, but as popularity and demand grew, we needed a bigger premises, so uh, we then moved to the railway arch, um, just around the corner from the pub, which was quite pioneering in a way, because half the breweries in Manchester are operating out of a disused railway arch. <laughs> we were the first to do it. Do you feel like there's quite a lot of interest in craft beer from everyone, or do quite a few people just want to come and sit in a pub and have a pint, and then that's what they go for? Marble's in a really unique position where it sort of toes the line between the modern craft and the traditional, so the two sides of the coin in, in Manchester's brewing scene, where there are um, a handful of breweries that have been owned by the same family for generations. They go back over 100 years and they will stick to like the very traditional English styles of, of beer that we have the newer emerging trend, the, the craft ones uh, that will focus on really big hoppy IPAs or Imperial Stouts, something like that. We at Marble do both. Well, I have to say, I've been pleasantly surprised by Manchester. It might not be as beautiful as some other cities, but there's definitely a vibe and an atmosphere here that a lot of other places just don't have. And if the alternative scene is more your thing, Manchester is definitely the city for you.